Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Lauren's Lionel. Today we're taking a look at the number 1800, the General Frontier Pack. I'm going to open the box here. The set is its original box. The Frontier Pack, or what Lionel like to call uh, gift packs, were basically uh, training sets about track, kind of akin to what the UK has, is what they call, well, they generally just call them train packs in the UK, but it's just trains, you know, locomotives, cars, that's it. You know, maybe a few odds and ends, but there's no track or transport. These these were designed for people who already had layouts or tracks and kind of be a little more economical to add on to, you know, a kid or adult's collection. So anyway, this set depicts the general locomotive from the famous Great Locomotive Chase. And we'll go into a little more depth about that and the contents in a bit here once we get it out. But we'll just go over it quickly. It comes with the 1862 General Locomotive, the 1862 Tender. The 1866 uh, RPO car, the 1865 coach, and the 1877 horse car. So we'll go ahead and take everything out of the box and get it on the layout, and then we'll take a better look at it. Be right back. All right now that we got everything out on the layout, we'll go ahead and take a look at it a bit more closely. Uh, the set was produced from 1959 to 1960. Like I said, it was a train, basically a train pack or a gift pack as they called it. So you just got the engine and cars. There was a separate version of the set, which included 027 track and transformer. That was the 1612. So basically what you got in the set was the uh, 1862 General Locomotive and the 1862 Tender. The 1862 was the lower version of the two really main versions of the General they made, which were this one and then the 1872, the difference being this version features a two position E unit, uh, no magnet traction, no smoke unit, and there's a bit less ornamental detail on the 1872. You get three position E unit, magnet traction, a smoke unit. There's a bit more valve gear detail right here, and there's uh, simulated brass boiler bands, and there's red paint along the domes here as well. And there's also a little cap on top of the stack. You can't see a part of the smoke unit, and the headlight housing is also red, so it's a bit more dressed up for the fancier version, but overall it's really still kind of the same engine when you think about it. So uh, but the engine models the uh, general locomotive itself from the Western Atlantic Railway, made famous in the 1862 uh, chase during the Civil War that by James J. Andrews, which they uh, basically him and his raiding party boarded the train in Big Shanty, Georgia, and Tempted to make their way towards Chattanooga to sabotage the South's railway system and, of course, cut off supply lines. They didn't get, they got basically near the border of Georgia and Tennessee when they finally were, they gave up the chase and eventually were captured, unfortunately. So, so it's interesting, too, when they made this set, uh, another thing that was included in the box was a uh, kind of a story pamphlet from the Ellen and Railroad around the same time this set made the Ellen Head, Ellen Head, Railroad had removed the actual general from Chattanooga Union Station and had been in the process of restoring it. I think it entered service right about when the set came out. And they ran it on excursions and recreations and stuff for uh, the anniversary of the grade itself. So that's something neat to see, too. It was kind of a sort of contemporary model of it from that time. It ran for, I think, probably maybe half a decade or so before it was put back on display. So, anywho... Uh, which also the colors don't seem to match when they, this may have been based on how it looked when it was in display at Chattanooga Union Depot, I'm not sure, because when it was put into excursion service, it was of course painted black, gold striping on the tender and stuff, but that's again another topic, it's a toy train, it's not a scale model, but what if any means, I think it's actually a bit oversized, you know, keeping of line now, they like to use common parts and stuff, so, and you'll see that too with some other stuff, I mean, make certain things work on this. Um, there was no room for a whistle, I know, on the premium version, so the whistle, which you'll see the cars here in a second, if you had the 1872 set, would be actually in the coach car at the rear, because it fit better. But anyways, we'll go ahead and advance this up. This does have a working headlight. Both versions did have that. Pull up here and see the tender. Interestingly, on the Tender 2, and I just learned this recently getting some more of the info for this video, the wood load on here is actually rubber. It's not plastic. It's actually soft rubber. So that's something kind of neat. 
Anyways, we'll put up to the next car here. We have the 1877 horse car. This is a uh, wooden truss body flat car they made with this sort of stake fence that fits inside. These all just drop in on pins. And then there's these little dividers you can basically arrange as you want. It came with, I believe, eight dividers. And then, of course, the perimeter guard on the outside. Also included the car were six horses. You got two each of brown, white, and black horses. And if these look familiar at all, these are actually the, see this one has it, these are the Plasticville horses made by Bachman of the era. So same horses you would get with Plasticville sets and other little Lionel packs and whatnot. They actually, it would be probably hard to see on camera, but they are actually stamped with uh, BB for Bachman Brothers on the bottom, which is pretty cool. Uh, another little neat thing I learned while researching this, because I got this, and I'm like, they look kind of familiar. And then, of course, I've had some Plasticville horse around here somewhere from other sets I've acquired. So I'm like, oh, that's kind of neat. So... Anyhow, this car got used plenty other times, too. They recycled it to a lot of the lower end sets, and later, like in the 60s, you'd see have this same, you know, old style truss flat car with a trailer load or some other stuff they did, you know, just in random sets or cable reels strapped to it. So they got their kind of money's worth, even if it wasn't in an old time set like this. I find it kind of interesting, too. They like to use this set to depict, you know, kind of an old west train when this was a southern train not a western train but western movies were becoming kind of popular late 50s and the 60s so it's also why this set was really came about and why of course flyer and marks made their own respective sort of old timey sort of sets but anyways uh we'll go ahead and advance this up again all these cars have the arch bar style trucks fitting in with the kind of late 1800s era i think these were actually tooled up for the set um Nothing in this set except for the horse car has working couplers. Everything else has the solid dummy couplers. The tender does, and these two, the horse car does have operating couplers. So now we're going to get to the 1866 uh, RPO car. Just basic decoration, Western Atlantic. I love the colors on these two, the yellow and the kind of brown roof. Interestingly, it's, you know, it does say U.S. Mail being a Civil War era car. There's no interior illumination or anything else. If you bought the premium general sets, there would be interior illumination on this car and the subsequent coach. Hang on, advance this. It's hard to get used to having a two position unit from most of the engines having three. And finally, the last car in the set, the 1865 coach. Actually, we'll back it up here a little bit. Coach, same frame and uh, basic, you know, sort of design as the RPO, though it does have the additional detail on the roof, extra vents. I'll pull this one off. You want to see a little more detail because the frames and everything else about the same. It does have the truss right detail and everything else underneath. You have your arch guard trucks. The couplers are actually body mounted, which is interesting for a line on everything else. is always truck mounted, but no interiors, just kind of frosted windows. And like I said, the premium sets would actually have interior lighting. And if you got the really fancy general, I think general sets, which I think would be the five-star general, they came with a whistle in the coach car and there would be I think a window or two blank or actually opened up there would be the whistle unit basically the same size as whistle you get in a whistling tender for most of the steamers in that lineup placed in here and that would work just like a normal whistling tender on this but because of the size of the unit they couldn't fit it in the tender here even being as kind of oversized as this set is so anywho we'll get it running around the layout and we'll be right back
Alright, a few quick things I forgot to mention too. Uh, up here in the boiler is your E-unit lockout switch, does have one. Uh, another neat fact about the locomotive is the headlight itself is actually powered by the handrails here. There is a little brush plate, in, or a little plate that comes off the brush plate itself on top of the motor that contacts this handrail here, runs down on the headlight, then your ground comes back. And it's a really ingenious way of powering it, if I can get it off the tracks here show you but you can see the ground comes out the bottom of the headline right there on focus there we go the little strip there comes out the bottom it's your ground and then there's actually another contact plate on the bottom of the smoke box there into the frame so top the motor here and then down in the frame I had it wrong a second ago but I have taken this apart and of course I had to make sure all that was connected I didn't realize why the headlight wasn't working at first because it wasn't squished kind of down enough for that to work. So that's pretty cool in itself. If you want a better look at the locomotive overall, get the autofocus a little bit better. There we go. It does have rollers, but it does have these weird sort of setup here. It's a little more frictiony than would you be probably used to, but they just didn't seem to work. Turn back around. Your motor itself is inside the cab here. And so there you basically have it. There is your 1800 General Train uh, Frontier Pack. So hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching and see you next time.